their third straight win at mm. Stamford Bridge, Cass. It's a win that that creates a little bit of history for yeah. Brentford because they have become the first team in Premier League history to win on their first three visits to Stamford Bridge. I also... <clears throat> I don't know if you saw this stat that was going around, that since April, <laughs> Chelsea have won once yes, yeah. at Stamford Bridge. Brentford, since April, have won twice at Stamford <laughs> Bridge. We own Stamford Bridge. No, we're no. not going to go down that route. But um, in terms of the game then, the, the first half, you sort of heard Sam Matterface putting the question to Thomas Frank about how he changed things. First half, Brentford were, mm. were below par. Chelsea started well. Mm. First were, 20 were minutes. on top. First 20 minutes, Chelsea were good. But they, it, it's sort of same old story for Chelsea in that mm. creating a fair bit in the game, but having no one to put it in the back of the net. No, well, Nicholas Jackson is a bit like Richarlison for Tottenham. He feels like they're they're carrying him a bit. He's finding it difficult. He's not got that instinct of when he sees a ball to strike it properly. Um, he wasn't given you know a lot. Cole Palmer made a few opportunities. Um, the the problem, look. This sometimes I don't like talking about previous results sometimes because I, I always think well sometimes it's irrelevant. Or I feel a lot of time it's irrelevant previous mm, performances, mm. but boy, you've got their number. You have got Chelsea's number. You're doing the low block. I was going to say, you know, yeah. Yobot, Yalnet, Jensen, Norgar, three of them are blocking in front. Chelsea didn't know where to go, and as the game wore on, and obviously he tweaked it slightly. Uh, Thomas Frank, for he wanted to offer a threat because, mm -hmm. you know, Brentford had been a threat at Stamford Bridge when they played there previously, and it worked to a dream. Well, this is it. I mean, there yeah, was... it's not coincidence. This is a game that was quite predictable in, well, in a way. Well, that's the thing I was going to say because a lot of people might say, and, and even Sam said it in his commentary, that they've stolen a goal, they've stolen the lead, that, that some people might say it was a smash and grab, for example, but. There was a game plan there. No, there, there was, was a game, game plan, plan quite clearly that by you Brentford to to pack the midfield, to play that low block, to make it very difficult for Chelsea, which they did. And in the end, the counter attack, obviously from Brian and Burma and Neil Mopé towards the end, sealed the deal with that second goal. By but the that, way, we wish I wish I would have took audio of you and the producer over Neil Mopé <laughs> and the second goal. It was fantastic commentary between the two of you. Because I've never seen such a divided opinion between the, well, the producer and yourself now. I'm naturally going to be biased <laughs> with Neil Mopé because of what he's achieved with Brentford before. And I'm, I'm buzzing for him. I think he's playing really well for us. He just isn't getting the goal that he probably mm. deserves. You know, I go back to the Burnley result from last weekend. Had a goal disallowed for offside was really instrumental to a lot of our forward play last weekend. And, you know, yes, you could argue, could he have gone for goal on that counter-attacking move when it was just basically him running at goal? But he had a long way to run, carrying the ball, let's not forget. I mean, Robert, let's give credit to Robert Sanchez, by yeah. the way. The speed of a goalkeeper that well, he had who'd gone up for a corner. That, go that was going to be my one because I played with a goalkeeper here called Nancy, called Gregory Wimby, his name was, and he was in the quickest three of the club. Right, and I was wondering. I looked at that moment and thought Sanchez was really quick. R now you rapid. could say Mopé's not blessed with pace. No, okay, that's, that's never fine. Been his game, but yeah. it was also he, he got going because if you watch Mbumo and 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 the goalkeeper Sanchez, they're nearly level and yeah. level running. I yeah. know he's trying to sort of keep on side as but well. But Brian and Burma did have the edge to yeah, start. He did, the, yeah. If you like the but race, I, I was so. thinking as asking the listeners about. At their clubs they play, even non-league, their goalkeeper being one of the quickest because they are, I've played with goalkeepers that are in the top three of the, the sprinters at the football club, mm. you know, and thought, wow, how quick is our goalkeeper? You know, and you, you laugh because it, it doesn't happen very often, but this was a clear case. He's, Sanchez is quick. He was really quick and he really did catch up to Neil Mope, which inevitably led to Mope passing it to Mbermo, laying it off to him and Mbermo yeah. put it away. Um, I need a word on Mbermo as well now. Go on, have right. a word then. When we lose, because we will, Mo Salah, I want Brian Mbermo. Oh, for goodness I sake. I want Brian Mbermo because I think he's got oh. so many similarities to what Mo Salah does. His durability, his ability to get goals, his ability to play different positions. He always gets chances. He creates chances. And I, I think he's going to have the best season of his career at Brentford this year. You think? Because I just look at him and think... He's, I, you have to remind yourself that Brian Embalmer is only 24. I know. And I mean, you know, we, we've had this conversation... I think he's the unfortunate one out of the, the BMW, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. the Watkins, Ben Rama, yep. Mbermo, who the other two have moved on and, you know, they've had these big moves. 
and Brian stayed. Mm -hmm. But in a funny way, I think um, maybe a, I think Watkins has done really, really well, and maybe not so well uh, Ben no, Rama. No, that's true. But M Burmo has been brilliant for Brentford. You have to remind yourself he's 24 years old. That's what I find unbelievable. He's still incredibly yeah. young. And you're right, I think it did impact him when the other two left. Probably there's a part of him thinking, well, why have I not also been picked to move into a Premier League yeah. side, for example? Um, and it did. To, I think it did rock him a little bit when that next season started. Um, and he is one of those players I know in the past they've spoken about, he, he has a lack of confidence at times, even in training. If he misses a an opportunity in training, that it plays on his yeah. mind. But... That will change with maturity, that he'll realise... It shouldn't do, because he's a terrific player. No, but I, what I, I mean is, as, as in, like, not letting it... Yeah, affect him. Affect him, yeah. yeah. yeah course, he will yeah. be able to get over that in time. But we're seeing him come to the fore right now. He's been absolutely brilliant. Um, uh, and, you know, talk of Ivan Tony. we're not, at, at this present moment, missing mm. him. Of course, you miss him as a presence. But in terms of the output, Brian and Burmo is certainly stepping up. Oh, absolutely. I just... There's so much about his game I like... And even when he's not on a game, he's on the fringe of a game. And it, and the first half was difficult for him yesterday. Cause, yeah. But, you know, there was nothing from Brentford no. go, in the forward no, areas. No, it's but he's part. always alert. He's always thinking. I mean, I remember him getting a couple of goals at Spurs last year or, you know, his performance. Yeah, that's right. Towards he, the end of the it just, he was terrific in the whole game. Mm. And if you counter really quickly, which Liverpool do, um, I'm, I'm like, do you know what? And Burmo's the one for me. Weekend Sports Breakfast with Natalie Sawyer and Tony Cascarino. Sunday mornings from 6 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.